So I've quit my job as an NDIS local area coordinator and I really need to talk about it. Hi everyone, it's Carl. I am here with one of my support workers, Sophie. Hello! And the reason why I've got Sophie here today, I um, mean, apart from you know, helping me with my lunch and food and all that stuff and coffee, um, is because I recently quit my job and lots of my support workers have been asking me why um, and I found it a little bit hard to explain exactly why I've decided to quit my job and so I thought that I could get Sophie to uh, ask me some questions about it and I could explain. Okay, so why did you quit your job? So I quit my job um, because where I was working, uh, so the NDIS, they've decided to introduce some changes mm -hmm. to how it all works. And if you don't know much about the NDIS, it's uh, the Australian scheme for getting disability support. So uh, the NDIS pays for things like wheelchairs and support workers and therapy and stuff like that. So they pretty much keep you employed. Yeah, great. Um, and, you know, it's been really good for me because it's, you know, allowed me to, to move out of my home and, you know, be independent and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I talk about, you know, disability lots on this channel uh, and the NDIS has given me funding to, um, you know, live a pretty independent life, uh, which is great. And so they've recently introduced some changes to the NDIS um, and, you know, I think that they're really, you know, detrimental and a really bad thing. And it's gotten to a point where, you know, I can no longer, you know, work there because um, I find it a real, you know, moral, you know, moral quandary to be in where I don't want to work for somewhere where they're making all these changes and the changes are not putting people with disability first. And so mm. I decided I really had to, you know, put my money where my mouth is and, and quit so I can actually talk about some of these changes and hopefully make them change their mind about it. All right, Carl, so you said they were making some changes. Um, can you talk a little bit about those changes and what they're going to involve? Yeah, sure. So at the moment when you're going to get your NDIS plan, you have a meeting with someone and you talk about, you know, what your goals are, what you want to do and what support you need to achieve your goals. So, you know, for me, my goals are around you know, independence and, you know, accessing the community and living a, you know, relatively normal life. And then they work out based on those goals, um, you know, what funding you get. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, for example, I might say I need a support worker for around, you know, two hours in the morning, an hour for lunch, an hour for dinner, and maybe an hour at bed. And then, you know, that comes to a certain number and then that's, multiplied by, you know, 365 days a year. Yeah. And that kind of calculates a bit of a budget. And the same thing might be for physiotherapy. You know, I might see a, a physio, um, you know, fortnightly, and I might see an occupational therapist occasionally if I need a new wheelchair and that type of thing. So you talk to the NDIS and you get a plan based on the things that you need and the supports that you need. And so the big changes that the NDIS are wanting to introduce are what's called independent assessments and that's where instead of having a meeting with someone to decide what your goals are and what your funding will be, you have um, a stranger come to your house and um, kind of you know watch you and observe you for three hours, um, ask you some kind of yes no questions ask you questions around, you know, what you can and can't do um, and really kind of assess you. And at no point do they actually, you know, ask you what you want to do or what support you need. They just focus on the things that you, you can't do and then put those numbers into 
a magical, you know, robot machine computer and then use that to output a funding figure. Okay. And then that funding figure determines, um, you know, how much support that I can buy. Hmm. It's not a very nice way of doing it, is it? Well, I mean, the, the, the worry with that is, you know, I won't be able to actually have any input in it. Yeah, so that's right. So, you know, if, if I was someone who was very sociable and went out all the time, you know, that, that wouldn't be captured in the independent assessment. Yeah, exactly. And instead of that, they'll just give me a, a funding figure based on their little quiz that they do, you know, of a random person doing it. Yeah. And then that's how they'll decide how much money I get. So it's really, you mm. know, disempowering, I suppose, for... Definitely. And three hours isn't a very long time. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's one of those things assessment. where... It's, it's, it's also, it's like a long time, but also not a long time. You know, it'd be quite traumatic having someone kind of mm, definitely. grill you for three hours. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So it's, it's, um, definitely concerning and there's, you know, there's more to say on that, but I, you know, don't want to, don't want to talk about it too much, but yeah, it's certainly concerning. Um, and the reason why they're doing it, you know, mainly is, is to cut funding from the NDIS mm. because they're. They're worried about how much the NDIS costs mm -hmm. and they're um, wanting to cut funding to, to make the NDIS cheaper, but that's going to have an adverse effect on, on people with disability. Definitely. All right, another drink cup? Yes, please. Go. Thanks. I'll ask you a little question while you're having a sip. So you've talked about um, some of the concerns regarding the changes. Um, the main sort of issue being the fact that it's quite interrogating they're coming over and yep. doing the assessment, quite uncomfortable for people with disabilities. Um, what are the other problems that come with some of these changes? Yeah, so another problem that, you know, I, I can see and other people can see is they're called independent assessments, mm. um, which means a random person comes to do the assessment. So that's someone who doesn't know anything about you. They don't know your, you know, your story or your own personality or your own needs. And, you know, they're meant to be objective, but because they don't know anything about the person, um, the information that they're likely capture will be quite, you know, inaccurate and they might forget to ask certain things. Yeah. And um, for lots of people, um, having a stranger come into your home and ask you very, very private questions um, is a real concern uh, because, you know, some of these questions that they will ask, you know, a, a, you know very you know, private, very, um, you know, can be quite kind of emotionally charged mm -hmm. um, and it means that people might not want to actually divulge the full extent mm -hmm. of, of their disability to the assessor. And then if they don't do that, then it means that their funding will be adversely impacted yeah. by that because... Potentially cut as well as... Yeah, yeah. So if you don't tell the assessor, um, you know, some of the challenges that you have, they won't be captured in the, their, their, um, you know, their quiz that they do. Yeah. And it means that the funding you'll get will then be, you know, way less than what's required for you to actually get the therapy you need or mm, okay. get the support you need. Um, and the other major problem with it is um, you can't I, you can't see the results of the assessment. Okay. So it's it's hidden, it's confidential. Mm -hmm. They won't give you a copy of the report um, of the results of the assessment. Yeah. Um, and you also can't ask for another one if you felt that it didn't go very well or you felt that the assessor wasn't, you know, doing the job properly. So you can't really appeal the, the decision um, based on the assessment. So, you know, it's one of those things where they're saying, take it or leave it. And if you, if you leave it, it means that you're left with no support because mm. they either approve the funding package as a result of the assessment or they give you nothing at all. So if you have a, a bad experience, there's no avenue for appeal. And that's a big change because at the moment, if you're not happy with your NDIS plan, you can appeal the plan and have someone someone different look at the plan okay right look at the decisions that were made yeah and if that's not appropriate enough you can even take it to court and go to what's called the 
administrative appeals tribunal mm -hmm. and get it looked at again. So at the moment it's good because if there's a problem, you can get it rectified. Can have a few people check it, a few yep. different people. Yep. Mm. But with the new proposed model, you either take it or leave it, and that's really worrying for lots of people. Definitely. No, that is very concerning. So how have other people reacted to these upcoming changes? Has there been a bit of sort of uproar? Yeah. In the disability community? Well, definitely. So um, I'm not the only one, you know, who's against these changes. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I can safely say that, you know, the vast majority of people with disability are against these changes. Yeah. You know, so are their families. Um, so are service providers as well. So, you know, organisations and businesses who provide services to people with disability, they're also worried about these changes because they know that their clients will be, um, you know, able to get less services. And that's, you know, bad both for their business, but also, you know, know they know that, their clients, you know, people with disability, won't be able to get the support that they need. Um, so the whole, the whole sector, you know, uh, this whole sector of people with disability, as well as providers and families, mm. are all coming out against these changes. And the sad thing is that um, the the NDIS doesn't seem to be listening, and the government doesn't seem to be listening. So one mm. thing that's been really frustrating, you know, for us, um, for people. With disability is that the government has said that they're willing to consult on all of these changes uh, and run things as a, a pilot so testing them out and seeing how it works but while they were doing the pilot they also hired all of these assessors and negotiated the contracts of all of the assessors and pretty much said it's going ahead regardless of what your thoughts are so it's been really you know um, quite patronizing for for people to be told that you know they'll they'll be listened to, mm. but they're not actually be listened to at all, and that's been really um, quite disheartening to very to hear and, and yeah very frustrating, and so that's why so many people are are up in arms about all these changes, and that's why you know we're going to have to take kind of drastic measures you know like mm. myself and and quitting and saying I don't want to be a part of this because it's not what I you know signed up for when mm. I was um. Yeah, you know, working um, you know as a as a partner with the with the NDIS, mm, so it's quite quite stressful. Yeah, definitely. What inspired you to take a stand against this issue, Carl? Well, um, I can't actually stand Sophie because I'm in a wheelchair. Um, but I think you know with this, you know, with the the planned introduction of independent assessments. Um, so, you know, the NDIS and the government, they've been selling it to people as a way of making things more fair and selling it to people by saying it's been a really good change and going to be really beneficial for us mm -hmm. as people with disability. But then, as I was saying before, you know, at every stage people have been saying that, no, this does not sound like a good idea. There are so many problems with this idea and we haven't been listened to. And also, um, you know, the stuff that they've been saying publicly, saying it's all about fairness and stuff, has been different to what they've been saying internally, where internally the emails going around, you know, going around the office of the NDIS and things like that, they've been saying that the changes are all about saving money and cutting costs and increasing what they call financial sustainability. Mm -hmm. And so that's been really frustrating for me because, um, you know, our lives are not just about saving money, you know. And it's that thing where um, if I didn't have support workers, I would have to, you know, live with my, you know, family and my parents who are, you know, retirees now. Um, and then if they, you know, couldn't look after me anymore, um, I'd have to be, you know, in a, an aged care nursing home or something like that. Mm -hmm. And that will cost the government money anyway. So yeah. this whole conversation around financial sustainability is really, really frust make, doesn't frustrating for me. It? Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And it's like that thing where, you know, obviously it costs money, but there are savings made by investing in people with disability. Because if I'm, you know, supported to live my life, I can then do other things that, you know, I wouldn't be able to do otherwise. So I could 
you know, get a job and I can work mm. and I can, you know, go out to cafes and spend money in the economy yeah, and, exactly right. you know, run this YouTube channel and, you know, stuff like that, which um, does have a bit of a, an economic benefit, hopefully, you know, mm. in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. Carl, I know quitting your job was quite a scary thing for you to do. Do you regret quitting your job at all or are you happy with the decision you've made? Well, I mean, it's only been, you know, a couple of days mm. since my last day at work. Um, but I felt really, you know, kind of empowered by, by quitting because now I can finally, you know, speak up about some of mm. these issues. Take a stand against the issue. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we've already established that I can't actually stand. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, take a, take a um, stand against the issues. You know what I mean. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Um, but, but no, but it, it's Take a good. stance on the issue. Take, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, it's fine. Um, but, but yeah, because, you know, when I've been going to work and hearing about all of these changes, it's been really, um, disheartening and been really getting me down. Um, and that's not been very good for my, you know, my mental health and well-being. And so it's been really upsetting for me knowing, you know, how much of a potential effect the changes you know will have on my life yeah. and so you know I'm feeling good about being able to to do something positive about it and hopefully try and stop these changes um, and also you know on that point as well it means I can focus on doing other things as well yeah um, but I suppose it is scary because you know um, I've got a got a mortgage and um, you know got bills to pay yeah. And, you know, quitting, quitting a job is a, a big thing when there's no um, direct you know, new job to go to. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so that is a bit stressful, but, mm. but I really felt that, you know, I couldn't work there anymore because of these changes. And that's something that, you know, I don't regret doing at all. Mm. Yeah, well, you don't want to be unhappy in the position yep. you're in either, do you? You've got to put exactly. yourself first sometimes. Yep, yep. Good. So what do you want to happen now, Carl? Yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, so, you know, obviously I've been complaining um, and, you know, talking about the changes as, the changes and how we think that they're a bad thing. Um, you know, people think that they're a bad thing. But what do we want to actually happen? Um, well, we just want the government and we want the NDIS to actually listen to people because, you know, people with disability have said that we don't want these changes and we don't think that they're fair. And we don't think that they're the right way to go. Mm -hmm. And so actually, you know, we would appreciate it if, if, if people actually listened and stopped and actually consulted with the people that they work for. Because people at the NDIS, you know, they are employed by us as taxpayers and they wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for me having a disability. So, you know, in a way we are their boss. And so if they're not listening to us, they're doing, you know, us a big disservice. So we want them to put a pause on all these changes, uh, actually work with people with disability and their families, and then as a result of that, um, allow us to, to help fix some of the problems with the NDIS. Because of course, you know, the NDIS does have problems, it's not perfect, but this is not the solution. And, you know, if they want a solution, talk to us about how we can develop a solution together. And that's what we want. And that's hopefully what we can get. Yeah. And hopefully this video is able to raise a bit of awareness. Yeah, hopefully. Regarding the issue. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, thanks for watching. And, um, hopefully my next video will be a, a bit cheerier than this one. So <laughs> thanks Sophie. No worries. Thanks Carl. All right. Bye. See you guys. Can we do one of these? Like, subscribe!